Hello friends, this is Giuliano here. And I like to look at the crypto price charts. So why don't you take a look with me? I'm gonna share my screen. We're gonna start with Bitcoin, do a weekly roundup. Take a look at some weekly price charts. And for a few key considerations, we'll move down the time frame to daily. And on Bitcoin, we'll even look for hourly just for fun. But we start with BTC on the weekly. And we are definitely retesting these prior lows locally. <clears throat> these prior lows, retesting them. And it's looking relatively weak, but um, we'll have to look a little bit lower time frames to really get a, a sense of it. We're getting across on the 20 weekly moving average bearish with the 200 week. And overall, uh, the price action is following this downtrend um, and looking to make potentially some lower lows. And we're going to have to keep a closer look. So let's take a look at the daily price chart. Uh, there's certainly room for the price to, to move back up, um, but it's just less likely each time it knocks on this door of this floor. Um, and here it is again. So the big question becomes, is this lower end of the Bollinger Band going to hold? And it's, it's, it's horizontal now, and the price might, might chop a bit within this region again still. Or is it time for the price to, to turn over and fall down? We are uh, into the negative momentum, but it doesn't, you know, who knows how big it has to be. Although for all intents and purposes, the sense is that the price will be making lower lows. And uh, so in that case, that's why it's important to keep an open mind because it can do really anything. Um, and I think the other thing we should consider here is uh, what type of trend we're working with locally. So we've, we've got this right here. I'm kind of working with that, that downtrend right now currently. So yeah, well, we're gonna see where this all leads in the coming uh, weeks into October. You might already uh, have dumped down much before then. And <clears throat> Some interesting price action here on the four hour time frame. After making the top, um, there's just a lot of good action here on these horizontal levels. Uh, it struggled to break down below it, finally did, came back and retested it, and then made its way down towards the lower end. Since then, it's bounced up and returned back down, but at least it has a local higher low than the previous low. But really, you're still running this this local downtrend here even like this. So we're gonna see what happens. I think price comes back down further, but whatever, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. So there is uh, the BTC price. And if we take it back towards, um, if we take it back towards the, the higher time frames, um, yeah, it's looking very weak on the daily still, but anything can happen. You know, we can get some wicks here and play out some time and then move back up higher. Now we're gonna see if this, when does this downtrend get tested again next? Do you test the downtrend before you break this lower horizontal level or do you break the levels and uh, eventually test this downtrend somewhere down the line into um, November, December? I don't know. So we're gonna watch for that. That's BTC on the daily and that should speak to the weekly with uh, the price action really below this, uh, this zone here, this level here. Um, and so, yeah, you're into some choppy territory, uh, some potentially uh, negative territory. Look for 15,000 to potentially hold if you do get down there or even into, well, I guess into 14s is expected, but, but you know, you got the lower end of the Bollinger Band down there. So maybe that's where it ends up on the weekly and find some support there from previous price action down here um, in this cluster. So anyway, we'll see though, how soon is it gonna be? That's really the question. And if it can hold these lows here and move higher again, um, even if it doesn't break out of this overall downtrend, that at least allows for the opportunity of a type of uh, horizontal um, base formation. 
before uh, potentially breaking higher. So, or even potentially breaking lower, but at least by then you're really going to be challenging this 20 week moving average. And I think that's why you're going to know soon enough, sooner than later, like you're going to be challenges 20 week moving average. Is the price going to be able to hop over it or is it going to be already rejected and moving further down? So yeah, there you have it. Let's watch for this horizontal channel to form or to break down. Interesting. Let's PTC on the weekly. Okay, we're gonna move into the KMD actually uh, first, and then we'll jump over to Pirate Chain as we tend to do. Um, KMD against BTC still seems to be holding the horizontal channel uh, relating to uh, below the previous like uh, low lows, candle body closing and 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 support touching. And, and suching, we're, we're below that, okay? But we're above the previous uh, levels of support, which were broken down back in um, April, 2022. So these formed throughout the beginning of 2022, this kind of horizontal level. So we're between that horizontal and the previous above horizontal price action level. And if you notice, even the wick come down to around that mid level here, and that's kind of where you are. You're just trying to hold that. So anything within here is continued um, good, good side of things. If you break down below it, you start getting very concerning, but at least you have lower end of the Bollinger Band and a retest of the previous lows to hope for before our next bounce. But um, as time marches on, so does the, the opportunity to, to break above to the right of this down, long downtrends. Okay, so that's what we're looking for coming up within uh, into 2023, really. Um, and for it to take longer time, then the price is gonna have to come down first um, before maybe breaking it into the spring of 2023. So in a lot of the charts, a lot of information points to 2023 around spring-ish, um, but we'll see what KMD can do if it can hold these horizontal levels. That'll be a tough challenge um especially as you get some some waning momentum in the in the positive momentum territory on the macd potential waning and we'll see if it can uh, hold these 50s of the rsi if it can't then it's probably turn down and break down as well that'll be a you know a correlation of that so anyway yeah watch the price action so far it's half decent um trying to hold above the 20 week moving average there it is. So yeah, let's see how this goes over the coming weeks and months for KMD. Good luck out there. All right, now we're gonna move over to Pirate Chain quickly here, which itself is looking relatively weaker, okay? Um, because now in this local spot here, you're making coming to test this low here and you're potentially gonna make a lower low, then you're really challenging this horizontal level here. But you have this lower end of the Bollinger Band, it's all coming together. You're looking to get it to narrow and go horizontal and have some volatility. And the, of course, if you're a long, if you're long uh, RBTC and you're a bull RBTC, then you are hoping that that narrowing provides volatility to the upside to challenge this downtrending price action and uh, to go from there. Um, otherwise you're gonna find some volatility, but it'll be to the downside and that will start testing these lower price levels down here. So, Good luck out there for all the pirates. This is the weekly on pirate chain. Not looking as sharp and strong as it once was even a couple of weeks ago, but even then it was, you know, it was weak after this, uh, this downturn. Now what you do have going for it though, potentially is that you are, you, you could say you're breaking out of the downtrend to the right, you know, for all intents and purposes. So in that sense, I would say um, that you are uh, more bullish than bearish. So at least it's 51 bullish, 49 bearish in that sense, you know, um, it might take a little bit of time, it might even go a little lower, but the bottom line is uh, it looks like this is pointing to the upside, but let's watch and find out. Okay, good luck out there. Yeah, Pirate isn't looking so bad when we throw this local downtrend on the game, okay? Um, so watch for that to have some significance. All right, cool. 
Um, yeah, let's actually, let's check XMR quickly because I believe we have to check it on this. And we're checking it on, what was it on the Poloniex? Yeah, so anyway, finding its, its challenge here, it is looking like it's finding at least a intermediate resistance. Um, trying to fight and stay above the 200 week moving average, but this current candle is, is what's happening. The previous candle broke down below it and the next one, uh, the, the one before it broke down below it and, and the next one, which was last week, um, couldn't close above and it, it got chopped off. So let's see, you know, it's, you know, the wick above the 200 week. So that just shows a bit of weakness, but maybe it's just a fake out and it's gonna resume to the upside. Although uh, watch out and watch for this trend line um, to see if you break it to the right. And then we'll see from there. Although price can keep topping for a little while as we'll see in some other charts. Anyway, XMR BTC looks like it may have reached its local top, but we're gonna find out over the next coming weeks. So if anything, um, we can change our considerations at that time, day by day, really, if you want, um, yeah. You know, if you're retesting this 20 day moving average, where are you gonna break it? If you don't break it, then you are uh, remain bearish. Anything below this kind of horizontal level here or whatever, even the 20 day, anything below 20 day moving average remains bearish. Um, cautiously safe as you have Ichimoku cloud here, but that's all correlated with this also important trend line and the uprising 200 day moving average. So you know what, you could salvage something here on XMR and go higher in the coming weeks, months, maybe it's gonna break below the trend line and find some sideways action before going higher still into 2023. We're gonna see. Um, let's bring it back to the weekly, just to get a sense of that. Uh, spring of 2023 is just into here. So yeah, I mean, maybe you break down on the, on the, on the higher time frame here, you have this whole cloud where you can find some support within here and then continue higher. Although that does take a lot of energy out of the price to have to maintain the level within this kind of a an indicator, you know, and you have this 200 week moving average as well coming down, um, descending here. And so, yeah, I'd say overall though, it's not so bad. Uh, XMR looks like it could it could hang. It could hang. So a uh, good luck out there, XMR. Okay, uh, before we slide back to the Aurox terminal, let's just hit up a quick VRSC. We'll take a look at the three-day chart and things are looking overall pretty good. Uh, recently broke out of this local downtrend here, this one here, okay. Broke out of this local downtrend and uh, after a little, bit of time, we got um, a good move higher in price, but you can see these indicators resisting the price action, the 200 period, the 55 period, both of them creating um, too much resistance, as you can see here. Uh, and then with the wicks, you can see it. And then the bodies are around this type of price level here. So you're in a decent position. Um, it already got one candle supporting off the 20 period moving average down here, the yellow line. So for all intents and purposes, it's pretty decent. Uh, and this horizontal zone is what needs to hold really, um, unless uh, the price is going to be considered more bearish and then you're going to be going further down. But until then, really, you're aiming for this zone here and beyond. Uh, but that might mean you need to be in this horizontal support level a bit and base out there as well during this time. Maybe it'll chop through all of that. And eventually you're looking to get to the right side of this downtrend. And that again points into spring of 2023, maybe a little bit before that or whatever, depending when it jumps over, but that's the time frame. Otherwise, if you're gonna extend it further down and the price is gonna come from lower, then maybe you go into the summer of 2023 but uh, that makes sense. Okay, so that's your VRSC. That's pretty cool. On a three-day price chart, we're gonna check a look also at the, um, the other price charts here. We'll look, take a look here at ADA against VTC. Okay, ADA BTC um, still looking relatively decent. 
on the weekly, you've got uh, the price holding above this 20 week moving average. So it's like it's waiting to go up higher again, but really how much higher is it gonna go? And um, what's gonna happen after that? Is it gonna just dump hard fast um, and retest this kind of horizontal zone, 200 week moving average, lower end of the Bollinger Band type of stuff. So these are questions we've been asking for a little bit of time. Uh, but and it takes time to play out, especially on a weekly chart. On a daily, we can look also at, uh, at a, a nice trend that we've got going from this price action here and here and even here and into here. Now we're starting to see from the most recent highs. OK, we're breaking down, making lower lows here uh, compared to here and um, also can't hold the 20 day moving average and breaking it down pretty hard with the big bearish engulfing candle now getting it again in the next candle you know you're getting rejected by that 20 day moving average with the wick and it's just pausing here and you've got a nice each cloud for support uh right here okay but i think if we just take this kind of price action um i think within a couple few days we're going to see the price dump down further and we're going to test this 200 day moving average that's one option the other option is if we're going to actually make that higher high and we're going to make a bit more of a topping formation locally here then yeah we can totally expect it to break out to the upside and then down and then up and then finally start coming down and making something further down i mean possibly um so that's yeah that's the that's the possibility, but at least this shaping tells us that within the next few days we should see it move either down or up. That seems to be the scenario. Yeah, so watch that. These trend lines can be very powerful and helpful, um, but also the horizontal levels are what matters a lot too. And together they seem to point us to uh, time frames. And when we look again at the higher time frame here. Um, it's hard to say with the ADA price chart. I think with this one, you're really looking for, again, oops, once again, uh, best case scenario is some sort of horizontal price action forming. If you can do it within that level, that's great. If, or whatever, you know, like this level, whatever it has to be, uh, even if it has to be this level, and you find some horizontal price level into uh, the spring of 2023, and then you can move higher. Otherwise, um, it looks like it could be continued bearishness for longer term down into here uh, in into uh, 2023, 2024. Hey, and maybe it comes down makes. Yeah, that's the thing. This could be just the redistribution and then come further down. So even if it makes a horizontal deal, it could still come down further. But um, we shall see. Yeah, well, as the price action uh, continues to develop, we can keep developing our thought process. Cool. Um, that's it for ADA, I guess, right now. Let's just take this out and not get distracted by it. And there you go. Okay. So we even watched ADA on the daily. Let's take a run through a bunch of these charts. Hey, let's just take a look at theta. Where are you at? That's the monthly. We haven't looked at you since that monthly roundup. And basically following along the considerations. Um, yeah momentum looks like it's waning you're going to potentially get some bearish crossing this is a weekly price chart you've just recently had a 20 period cross bearishly against the 200 period moving average um and you're basically just riding that thing down it looks like you're going to come back down to these levels here and then your best bet is to hope to find some horizontalization but uh, there's a good chance you might also have to find it down here so Let's see what happens with with theta, but uh, so far it, it's playing out according to what we were considering. Now, best case scenario, you're getting some potential narrowing of Bollinger Bands. You can find some horizontalization through this horizontal channel we have laid out here, and you don't make lower lows than these previous lows of May June 2022. Uh, then that's a best case scenario, but otherwise, it looks like you might come down further. Okay, that's theta against BTC. And uh, let's run through um, here. Let's just quickly check the ICX as a barometer as well for some 2017 action along with KMD 2018. Um, and this one too is looking weak, although it's not at its lowest lows, but it's lower than um, previous lows. So. Yeah, narrowing Bollinger Bands. You're you're this in this case. You're below the 20-week moving average, and 
and not sure where this is going next. Uh, you can hope to pop up to the upside, but uh, it's looking relatively weak. So yeah, watch out. Good luck out there, ICX. Uh, Darrow here is missing a bit of data previous weeks back, but now we can see uh, if this is accurate. It has popped up here and you're actually above the 20 week moving average, but it looks like with this wick and this green candle here, it's probably, well, maybe it's pausing and maybe you are out of the these woods and you're at the upper end of this uh, support level, uh, previous resistance now potentially turning support. But let's not ignore also the larger downtrending um, channel. And so, yeah, watch out and you hope for, yeah, worst case scenario you hope for is um, finding a, a low at these levels here so you don't have a lower low or just a relatively smaller lower low and but hey if you can hold these levels then you've got something to test to the upside here this upper end of the channel so uh, we'll see i mean you're just beginning with some positive momentum here well i shouldn't even say that you've been in it for a little while so who's to say how long this is going to last uh kind of looks weak kind of at a previous support turned resistance level. So I'm not convinced. I think uh, down before up, but anyway, we'll see. That's the weekly on Darrow. Um, so let's check out track origin trail against BTC. And we see here a local downtrend uh, potentially going to cross it to the right side soon. So watch out for that. But there had been weakness in the previous weeks to the upside with, with this wicks. And now the price is below the 20 week moving average. Uh, what you've got going for it is you can find this 200 week moving average as support, making a higher low than the previous low. That would be huge because also you're getting a, a significant narrowing of the Bollinger Bands here. And with that comes volatility. And if you're holding this 200 week moving average, then the likelihood with, with a higher low here is that you're making a uh, volatile move to the upside. And with this downtrend to the with price to the right of the downtrend, that, that gives even a, a better idea of that, that potential. But there's a concern that uh, you've maxed out your positive momentum and now it's waning. So, Really, you got to watch out. What does the oscillator do in relation to the price? Maybe the price can flatten while the oscillator uh, resets itself with negative momentum to turn positive again. So we'll see. But you want to keep uh, keep an eye out for that on the origin trail price chart. Um, yeah. So it looks like your potential gets some movement on origin trail before the spring of 2023. So we have more developments to come. Origin trail price chart very soon. Cool. BNB looking like that's yeah, so origin trail. If you're if you're gonna break down below that 200 week moving average, it's definitely and not be able to hold it and you retest it and you you fail. Like that's a big sign as well. Um, okay, so BNB here um, is interesting because this could be part of a topping formation or it could just be a small smaller degree uh, intermediate uh, correction that then leads to higher prices um, like is it possible that this whole move here is the is the beginning of this topping formation that's going to take some time um, is it not is it are we just at the beginning of a breakout and we're going to keep going higher but but the, the price breakout enough hard and fast enough like it's already stopped here. You just broke out a little bit. How much above the previous all-time high? Roughly, oops. So you're roughly 20%, let's say. Okay, you made it above the all-time high. That's pretty decent. But um, yeah, it's having some tough time over here to continue higher. And if we look on lower time frames, it starts to look like a topping formation. And then the concern becomes really this horizontal line. So I guess the biggest thing on the long-term time frame for BNB is this horizontal line. If you start breaking below this horizontal line, and then you you have a struggle getting back over, well, even just first breaking below it, already now you've got this deviation of price action that could be dangerous. Um, 
because then you're below these this horizontal level and uh, that leads to much stronger potential for downside so yeah you really want to watch this horizontal level on the weekly i think that's the main deal and then if we take it to the daily and i think at this point we can get rid of our triangulations on the daily so this was the weekly right that's the big formation on the weekly and then we come into it on the daily and it's like oh wow the daily kind of looks like it too so what is it just going to continue higher maybe it's going to continue higher but in fact it did continue higher it was a little bit up sloping if you know to be exact but still it went higher deviated it came back down dumped and now you're at these levels which horizontally Horizontally, these levels are significant resistance now. There's no doubt. You have to get back above it. Now, the other concern is that within that uh, context, you had this considerable uptrend on the daily, and now you've broken strongly below that uptrend, to the right of that uptrend. So now when you break to the right of an uptrend, it's like you're breaking down. Um, and now you're, you've been retesting it for about a week or so but from the underside. So yeah, it's showing strength. And yeah, it might even get to this, this horizontal level again, uh, which it basically is doing. But what does that mean? Maybe you're just getting this big topping formation through, through all of this. And, and then what? Then, well, what happens next is moves down. So um, gotta be careful, I guess, is the concern because you got this uptrend and now you are no longer in that uptrend. You've broken below it. Now, can it resume? Yes, if you get high enough, but high enough fast enough but at this point when you start getting things like this um it feels like time is not on your side so watch out i mean that's definitely a concern now what else do we have that's good going for it you have the potential for a bullish macd cross but uh, how much upward momentum will it be maybe it'll just be a tiny little one it'll cross over like this and then come back down continue coming back down so not so sure, uh, but it's BNB. BNB can always uh, rock higher. And so that's what you want to watch for on the um, on the daily time frame. I mean, look to get it back above these horizontal, this horizontal level. If you fail around here and you start moving down, um, then yeah, that's a, a concern because then you're making a bigger topping formation to relate to a bigger move higher. And you start breaking down this move higher, uh, you better hold this horizontal line, otherwise you are toast down here. And, and that's, you know, on the daily, okay. But then on the weekly, you really start coming into a level of concern because then you start asking about this Ichimoku cloud, this 200 week moving average, or could they be the support that's needed? <sighs> And then this, this uptrending uh, support line, is that going to be the support that it needs? So fun times on the BNB chart. And yeah, looking like, um, like stick around for more. Yeah, cool. So now we head on over to link. Okay. So Link is, is actually looking pretty decent overall. I mean, all things considered. Because after making some quite lows, um, we had a nice bounce and it continued over time. So those lows are back in May, June. Uh, it's been bouncing since and now into September uh, towards the, the mid or end of September. Uh, you're coming around this 200 week moving average energy, the orange line. But even more importantly, you're more more significantly, I guess, closer is the the downtrending resistance. So it looks like probably you're going to turn around here, okay, and um, you're going to move back down to the downside. That's just it. Just looks like this space is probably going to get taken up by the price action and look to hold this lower low, this low, and and as a as a retest, and then go from there. Now the concern is that if you 
hug and turn around, but you don't hold that, then you're coming down lower and you're you're down to like these horizontal levels here, at least it feels like, it seems like. So yeah, this is an important junction here for the price action. Um, likelihood is to turn back down to the downside, especially, especially after having this much uh, positive momentum, but you never know. I mean, these things can hop over to the, to the right side of the downtrend first. You know, maybe, maybe you, you hang out here, you get to the, to the other side, and then you fall back down and you find support on this side before you can go to the next place. That would be great. I, if Link can do that, that's incredible. Nice. Very good. Because um, for, for a while back here, it was looking very weak. So, um, yeah, looking good. Okay. Next, um, I would like to move on. Yeah, let's go towards. XRP against BTC. Wow. Um, we check a look at the weekly and nice XRP. So we had this wedge labeled out. I mean, it it felt like there was a good chance it could make it. It was holding that support line, that ever so important support line for how many weeks? Wow. And we've finally gotten into the Ichimoku cloud. Incredible. Good stuff, XRP. Congratulations. Now let's watch it. It'll probably find some rejection around here, but uh, you never know. Maybe it'll keep going. That's quite nice. Um, yeah, so stick around to find out more. We'll watch as the as the RSI and MACD uh, play with each other here. Maybe you're going to get a bigger pump. I don't know. Um, but above the Ichimoku cloud, you've got this 200 week moving average coming down at you. So we'll see. Yeah, this is looking good. You could still get a few legs out of this one higher, but um, nice work. Yeah, these wedges make a difference. You watch it pop out to the other side. It went right away pretty much, but you did have a week where you could, you know, where you could pay attention and say, yeah, even, even before that, it was one or two weeks where it was it was a good opportunity to really say, okay, there's a good chance here now. Um, but anyway, this is none of this is financial advice. It's just kind of watching the price charts so we can make our own decisions at the right time in the right places for ourselves. Good. So I hope this is helping you. Um, yeah, we're going to move on though. That's XRP against BTC. Looking good, uh, but it looks like it's made most of its move, but we're going to see. Uh, maybe it'll make more. Okay. Ethereum against BTC last week, relatively very weak, uh, huge bearish engulfing candle, breaking down these levels of price action. Now you're below this one. It's interesting how the price even plays at these levels. It's like there are zones, right? But at the same time, just even placing this, this level here based on previous price action, uh, it, it respects these the price action um, at different times in different places on these charts. And there you go. That's where it is. Now you're getting this each mobile cloud, 20 week moving average of support. So can it hold? Um, that's a big strong hope for the bulls on Ethereum and it's coinciding with this 200 day moving average and each mobile cloud. But uh, yeah, overall, it seems like there's weakness gonna happen. Uh, however, it depends how much negative momentum will continue. And I'm guessing you're one gonna find some oversold first. Is the price gonna chop around here first before falling down further? Uh, could be, or maybe it's just gonna dump down all the way and just be unrelenting to the bag holders. We're gonna see, maybe you got a turnaround here. It's totally possible, but you just broke down a decent uptrend. And on the weekly, you've made like a pretty decent topping formation, um, unless this is just a sideways move before a move higher, but I hope so for all the, case, for all the sake of the bulls, but uh, this is looking, more dangerous here than it did over here. Let's put it that way. Okay, good luck there out there, Ethereum. Um, okay, let's run down a few more of these charts here, uh, a couple of handfuls really. We got dot, weakness, um, weakness at the 20 week moving average, 
coming back down to test these lows? Is it going to have to come down further? Lower end of the Bollinger Band is around here, upper end around here. They're narrowing and soon to be horizontal possibly, but you might get a bearish MACD cross. What's that going to mean for the price? We'll, we'll see because it doesn't mean that the price has to dump hard or something like that. Uh, so yeah, the best case scenario is find some sideways through here. And uh, move into the spring of 2023. If not, well, that'll be ugly because you're going to be dumping to lows that are very, very dangerous here. Okay. Either way, you've got, let's see. I mean, you broke this to the, to the right side, but maybe it's not time yet. And so let's just go for a more local downtrend and just say here, here is uh, a thought process right here okay we can start feeling a little bit better about the price on the bullish sense long terms if we are to the right of this downtrend that's dot against btc ftm against btc Week underneath the 20 week moving average. Uh, momentum, how much positive you're gonna keep getting? We'll see though. Hey, though, good news is you could possibly be beginning a sideways horizontal formation. Um, and the Bollinger Band starting to narrow and potentially go horizontal. You're gonna get some volatility. Is it gonna be to the upside or the downside? Uh, because of all of this downside action, I wouldn't be surprised if you get a move to the upside to test this level here. And maybe it's going to be huh, on the um, on the on the news of something, you know. And then maybe you come back down, or I don't know what it ends up looking like. But it, I could totally see that happening. And you get some, you know, some news about something or another, and it comes back down. And then who knows? And then does this does this level become a horizontal level of importance? We'll see. The other option is uh, you were at the top end of the level and you came to the lower end. Uh, you were at the top end and um, now you're coming down to the lower end. So when will that be? Maybe you need to go sideways a bit first and then you can continue falling over. I don't know. We're going to find out what this price does, right? But there is a, a bull case for it um, and a bear case. But I, I think be cautious because the bear case is, seems stronger currently. But watch it play out over the next uh, little bit and uh, let's see what happens. Here, let's just pull down to the daily just for fun. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's weaker enough on, oops, weak enough on the daily. Uh, you would want to see it. I mean, at least you have a green Ichimoku cloud to the right. So yeah, possible. I mean, you'd want to see it hold above these levels for sure. Um, get above the 20 day moving average and start to challenge the top of the Bollinger Band and kind of get over here and start going to this side. You know, all this stuff, if it can get to the right of this stuff, I think you're in a good position. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I think you might even be, be building a local uh, set of divergence here. So maybe you heard it here first, FTM BTC could locally be bullish, go to the upside first. Uh, but how high will it go? Who knows? Um, and can it get to the other side of this? Ooh, that would be exciting. Yeah, and it looks like you've got a whole, on daily level, you know, you've got a whole bunch of negative momentum ready to flip. So I think F FTM looks like it could have a nice little move here. Um, what type of percentage are we looking at? From here, roughly. You know, anywhere from 15 to 15 to 20%-ish. Cool. Well, watch out on your local crypto outlet if they start talking about FTM. Um, there you go. But on the weekly, it'll take time for sure uh, to really show itself. And same thing with with the Sol against PTC. It'll take some time. After a couple of weeks where we had these kind of pin red weak candles uh, of bearishness um, against this 20 week moving average in yellow, we get a this week we get a currently at least a stronger move higher but hey who knows how the the candle ends in the week it could even be a red candle making lower lows so ultimately this is not your uh, favorite chart in terms of being friendly to your long positions and currently who knows i mean maybe it can make it to the right side of this downtrending 20 week moving average but um, 
we're still watching for lower moves lower. Is it going to make lower lows than this? We'll see. That's the next question. But I think we continue with this kind of shape playing out on Sol BTC. But we'll see. Well, each week, new information is cemented in the printing of a candle. And as far as Avalanche goes, weakness indeed. Yeah, weakness, this downtrend, this most local downtrend here uh, is showing um, the, the price direction. And that looks down. Um, the 20 week moving average in yellow is basically doing the same. Um, but this horizontal level is showing that uh, we are still above it and could possibly use it as support. So locally, a higher low than the previous low. And um, we are, meaning we are not certain yet what's going to happen. Is this momentum con continuing down into negative territory? We shall see. Um, yeah, it's not clear yet fully on dot. Let's just jump down to the daily and say, mm, yeah, similar to FTM, you've got this very similar formation happening. You've got the right, the, the green Ichimoku cloud. You've got a bit of a downtrending 200 period moving average, 200 day moving average, not as, as um, downsloped as the, not, you know, the angle isn't as steep as the, the, as the 200 day uh, moving average descending on the FTM BTC chart. But still, it's the same ideas here. Look for this level to hold the support. If it does, and you get above this 20 week moving average and start challenging higher, I mean, yeah, then you look like you could get a decent move. You've had a bit of negative momentum, could turn positive. Uh, you know, you're at the lower end of the RSI. So, I mean, it could continue being more bearish, of course. So watch out for that. But I think you've got some good information on the daily chart that tells you when you can feel more bullish. So currently you can't quite feel that, but at least you're not bearish. You're in neutral territory. Bearish is below this, this horizontal level for the most part. Anyway, you're kind of neutral bearish uh, with a potential to turn bullish very quickly on the AVAX chart, avalanche against BTC. But on the weekly, yeah, I think you're, it's gonna take some time. Um, and your best bet, your best hope is to uh, is to fall within this kind of zone here, and uh, and make some sort of a bottoming in this levels. <sighs> Not convinced, but uh, you never know. We'll see. Okay, that's Avax against BTC now. Matic against BTC. Matic against BTC, you are hovering above this this Ichimoku cloud. Um, so question is, is this a consolidation before a move higher? You really got to hope so. Um, because the longer it does this, the longer it looks like it could be topping and then it'll eventually dump down. So just got to be aware. I mean, a lot of positive momentum. You're pretty high on the Ichimoku, um, pretty high on the RSI. Um, you know, all things considered. So yeah, you've just recently broken this uptrend uh, to the right side of it after a bit of a, a topping formation. So, um, well, maybe, you know, depending if you're using an Elliott wave, you could argue that this is a, a fourth wave into a fifth wave and then you're topped. But that means, yeah, you're going to have some time to come down lower, most likely. So uh, watch out on, on Matic on the on the daily chart, you've got some supports here, big Ichimoku cloud and 200 day moving average. But by the time you're there, I mean, you really got to hope that that holds support. Otherwise, um, there's a good chance the, uh, you're going to chance, good chance the price coming down into here. And then you are dangerously uh, in the midst of like the, the area where you could break down and get quite bearish uh, in the, the local time frame here. So we'll, we'll see what happens with Matic. You're just going to hold above this um, Ichimoku cloud region, 20 week moving average. You know, once the 20 week moving average comes up, if you can hold that, that's great. All right, so keep an eye on that. That's Matic against BTC. We'll do that over here. And then one of the high flyers recently has been Adam against BTC. Now you did make it above the two, the, sorry, it's almost over. I keep messing up my words. You made it over the Ichimoku cloud but how long is this positive momentum going to last? looks like these wicks could mean that you're topping. Uh, so we'll see here. 
it's at a level, you know, price right now is closing at levels where it found resistance significantly in the past here, okay, at these kinds of levels. So uh, don't, don't be surprised if it, it tops out here. Um, however, there could be a little bit gas left in the engine, so to speak. Um, you, we did, you know, you did make a, a higher high here, but potentially making um, bearish divergence. And yeah, even with the MACD having um, having made one negative histogram here, you start making bearish divergence on the histograms. So the histograms and the RSI showing bearish divergence with this wick price and this price action here. Um, as it increases in price and decreases in momentum, uh, it looks like we are going to probably top on the um, on the atom price chart, but it could take a number of days or even weeks um, before it fully starts breaking down. You've got this long trend line here. So watch for that. That's going to be our big signal for the atom on the daily. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. In terms of the weekly, you would want this level here to hold. And then that could be potential long range accumulation that can make all time new highs against BTC in a coming bull market. But who knows? Okay, we'll see. Keep an eye out for that. Keep watching to find out. Uh, Rune was looking bearish. Let's just double check its bearishness. Yeah, looking bearish, but you're towards the lower end of the Bollinger Band, towards this lower, this low here. Maybe you make the lower, you know, like a confirm this low, and then you can hop to the right side of this downtrending. Uh, resistance. And then from there, your best bet is to move higher first before you go lower. But anyway, who knows? So yeah, uh, Rune was looking not so good. But as time moves on, um, there's potential to go to the right of this downtrend and then higher. Um, if you can't hold this, then you're, you're very likely going down to these levels down here. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Okay, near BTC for all the near lovers, and then we'll do the dog and the sun, the doge and the tron. Yeah, near on the monthly, not so hot. Near on the weekly, trying to break this downtrending. Well, I mean, this downtrending is, is nothing actually. We were creating it. So we'll leave it there for now. Um, you're above the 20 week moving average, so that's to your favor. Still making higher lows, but I mean, how long is this positive momentum going to last? And what do we say on the daily? On the daily, this is not looking so good. You're making a higher low here than you did here, and you're coming to test these lows here. Here, lower into the Bollinger Band, you're now below the Ichimoku cloud. Best, oh, you're really hoping you can get above to this side. Then you're above the green Ichimoku cloud here. Then you're in business again as near. Uh, otherwise, you're breaking down, and then you, you're probably going down first before you can get over. But who knows? I don't know what's going to happen around these levels. Oops. So there, that's that's near against BTC on the daily. On the weekly, uh, yeah, you really need more information on the daily. Oops, oh, that's why we need to get that tool in there. Yeah, it's hard to say one way or the other currently on the daily. You just want to hold above these levels. You want to get it back into these, you won't cloud into the other side. So by the beginning of October, you should know, you know, first week or two of October, you should know with near, if not before then. Narrowing Bollinger Band, you're going to get a bit of volatility on one side or the other. Um, and it'll start to become more clear in the coming days. That's near against BTC. Wrong button. There it is. Okay, we checked the Doge. Um, I think it is accumulatory or redistributory. Um, yeah, I mean, not that great, not that strong. Still within this kind of downtrending uh, price zone. But you've got this horizontal level here. So if you can hold this horizontal level, you are in a good position. But how long is this positive momentum going to last? Well, it could last a while. So we'll see. We shall see. Um, nothing clear yet. If you can hop to the right side of this this kind of downtrend energy into um, the end of the year, then you're in a good position. Otherwise, if you start breaking down, ooh, danger. Danger, because then you're testing these lows here. 
Okay, that's the Doge against the BTC. You're gonna have to keep watching that one. On many charts, you need to keep watching until the information makes makes it more clear. The price action makes gives enough information to make it more clear. Similar with TRX, you're gonna have to watch this negative momentum play out and see where the price still is. Otherwise, it's gonna be um, hitting, you know, because it can clear out and this could just be a correction within a bigger move up or it could take a while and then this price action could be dumping down further. Now on the weekly, we've got this uptrend line here that we'll watch for. So that goes in towards 2023, all of this. So if you can stay above this 200 week moving average in orange and this each move up, then you're in a good position and above this horizontal level. Uh, yeah, like even better. Um, yeah, but especially this cloud, if it's gonna move up here. So if you're at this horizontal level now, then you're in a bad position. So. I'm going to get rid of that for now. Actually, no, let's just hide it. There you go. Okay, currently facing resistance and that's concerning. Um, you're riding this 20 week moving average, good chance you might break down below it. But anyway, you got this Bollinger Band looking to narrow, hold each multi file support and then you're in a good position because recently uh, you did break below this uptrend so now there's just a really good chance it's going to want to break down further so just got to be aware got to be careful of this trx move right now that's for sure uh, it's not clear but there's a good chance you hit a topping area so watch for the consolidation over time if you think you know if it's long if you're long and you want to go higher but it's always tough at the uh, at the uh, end ranges of, of these levels, these price action levels. Okay, that's why it's about, you know, people talk about risk and um, managing risk and that sort of idea. Okay, that's it for me. I've taken up a lot of time here and I am done. I hope this has served you well. I hope you've gotten some good ideas out of it and I hope uh, you just keep doing well, okay, for yourself. Yeah, wishing you all kinds of love, peace, and happiness. Until next time, goodbye.